Hey guys. This is Space Train. Your daily express till the edge of the space, and today we will talk about what is a string theory. Grab your tickets and let's go. Don't forget to subscribe to get unlimited pass on our expedition. In our previous video we have discussed what is string theory and how it was developed. But let's go further and find out more about further development and dimensions. Einstein's theory of relativity opened up the universe to a multitude of dimensions, because there was no limit on how it functioned. Relativity worked just as well in 4 dimensions as in 40. But string theory only works in 10 or 11 dimensions. If scientists can find evidence supporting string theory, they will have limited the number of dimensions that could exist within the universe. We only experience four dimensions. Where, then are the missing dimensions predicted by string theory? Scientists have theorized that they are curled up into a compact space. If the space is tiny, on the scale of the strings, on the order of 1033 centimeters, then we would be unable to detect them. On the other hand, the extra dimensions could conceivably be too large for us to measure, our four dimensions could be curled up exceedingly small inside of these larger dimensions. Because of these obstacles, the number of physicists working on the theory had dropped to two, Schwartz and Michael Green of Queen Mary College, London, by the mid-1980s. But in 1984 these two die-hard string theorists achieved a major breakthrough. Through a remarkable calculation, they proved that the equations of string theory were consistent after all. By the time word of this result had spread throughout the physics community, hundreds of researchers had dropped what they were working on and turned their full attention to string theory. Within a few months, string theory's unified framework took shape. Much as different vibrational patterns of a violin string play different musical notes, the different vibrations of the tiny strands and string theory were imagined to yield different particles of nature. According to the theory, the strings are so small that they appear to be points, as particles had long been thought to be, but in reality they have length. About 10 minus 33 centimeters, the mass and charge of a particle is determined by how a string vibrates. For example, String theory posits that an electron is a string undergoing one particular vibrational pattern, a quark is imagined as a string undergoing a different vibrational pattern. Crucially, among the vibrational patterns, physicists argued, would also be the particles found by experiment to communicate nature's forces. Thus, string theory was proposed as the sought for unification of all forces and all matter. What of the six extra spatial dimensions required by string theory? Following a suggestion made in the 1920s by Theodor Kaluz of Germany and Oskar Klein of Sweden, string theorists envisioned that dimensions come in two distinct varieties. Like the unfurled length of a long garden hose, dimensions can be big and easy to see. But like the shorter, circular girth of the garden hose, dimensions can also be far smaller and more difficult to detect. This becomes more apparent by imagining that the circular cross-section of the garden hose is shrunk ever smaller, below what can be seen with the naked eye, misleading a casual observer into thinking the garden hose has only one dimension, its length. Similarly, according to string theory, the three dimensions of common experience are large and manifest, while the other six dimensions are crumpled so small that they have so far evaded detection. During the decade from 1984 to 1994, many theoretical physicists strove to fulfill string theory's promise by developing this abstract, wholly mathematical framework into a concrete, predictive theory of nature. Because the infinitesimal size of strings has precluded their direct detection, theorists have sought to abstract indirect implications of the theory that might be testable. In this regard, the extra dimensions of string theory have proved a major hurdle. Imagining these extra dimensions as small and hidden is a reasonable explanation for their apparent absence. Nevertheless, their detailed geometry is required for the theory to offer predictions. The reason is that strings are so small that they would vibrate within the tiny extra dimensions. Studies showed that, 
much as the shape and size of a French horn affect the vibrational patterns of air streams coursing through the instrument, the exact shape and size of the extra dimensions would affect how strings vibrate. And since the string's vibrations determine quantities such as particle masses and charges, predictivity requires knowledge of the geometric form of the extra dimensions. Unfortunately, the equations of string theory allow the extra dimensions to take many different geometric forms, making it difficult to extract definitive testable predictions. By the mid-1990s these and other obstacles were again eroding the ranks of string theorists. But in 1995 another breakthrough reinvigorated the field. Edward Witten of the Institute for Advanced Study, building on contributions of many other physicists, proposed a new set of techniques that refined the approximate equations on which all work in string theory had so far been based. These techniques helped reveal a number of new features of string theory, including the realization that the theory has not six but seven extra spatial dimensions. The more exact equations also revealed ingredients in string theory besides strings, membrane-like objects of various dimensions, collectively called brains. Finally, the new techniques established that various versions of string theory developed over the preceding decades were essentially all the same. Theorists call this unification of formally distinct string theories by a new name, M-theory, with the meaning of M being deferred until the theory is more fully understood. Another advance in string theory happened in 1997 when Juan Maldacena of Harvard University discovered the anti-de-sitter, conformal field theory, at slash CFD, correspondence. Maldacena found that a string theory operating with a particular environment, involving a space-time known as an anti-de-sitter space, was equivalent to a type of quantum field theory operating in an environment with one less spatial dimension. This has proved to be one of the most profound discoveries in string theory, establishing a powerful link to the more conventional methods of quantum field theory, providing an exact mathematical formulation of string theory in certain environments, and inspiring thousands of further technical studies. Today the understanding of many facets of string theory is still in its formative stage. Researchers recognize that, although remarkable progress has been made over the past five decades, Collectively the work is burdened by its piecemeal development, with incremental discoveries having been joined like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. That the pieces fit coherently is impressive, but the larger picture they are filling out, the fundamental principle underlying the theory, remains mysterious. Equally pressing, the theory has yet to be supported by observations and hence remains a totally theoretical construct. Call it a photon, or a quark, or a you get the idea. So, if string theory is correct, the entire world is made of strings. One essential quality of string theory is known as supersymmetry, a mathematical property that requires every known particle species to have a partner particle species, called a superpartner. This property accounts for string theory often being referred to as superstring theory, as yet, no superpartner particles have been detected experimentally but researchers believe this may be due to their weight, they are heavier than their known counterparts and require a machine at least as powerful as the Large Hadron Collider at CERN to produce them. If the superpartner particles are found, string theory still will not be proved correct, because more conventional point particle theories have also successfully incorporated supersymmetry into their mathematical structure. However, the discovery of supersymmetry would confirm an essential element of string theory and give circumstantial evidence that this approach to unification is on the right track. Even if these accelerator-based tests are inconclusive, there is another way that string theory may one day be tested. Through its impact on the earliest, most extreme moments of the universe, the physics of string theory may have left faint cosmological signatures, for example, in the form of gravitational waves or a particular pattern of temperature variations in the cosmic microwave background radiation, that may be observable by the next generation of precision satellite borne telescopes and detectors. It would be a fitting conclusion to Einstein's quest for unification if a theory of the smallest microscopic component of matter were confirmed through observations of the largest astronomical realms of the cosmos. Don't forget to comment, your thoughts. Are we close to develop ultimate theory?
Or maybe we should find some alternatives to string theory. Whether string theory is the ultimate theory, the theory of everything, is unknown. But it is a strong contender for explaining the inner workings of the universe. Scientists from all over the world will continue working together to discover what could be the ultimate theory of everything. There are lots of questions left, so don't space out, and live some space in your brain for answers. I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to see more, subscribe and click the bell button, to get notifications on our latest videos. If you are still here, grab your knowledge and get out of my train.